Greetings, folks, and welcome to another episode of History Up Close, sponsored by the Naval Aviation Museum Foundation and produced by our brothers and sisters at Hellcat Productions, headquartered right here in Pensacola, Florida. I'm your museum director, Sterling Gillum, and I'm speaking to you today from our museum restaurant, the QB Cafe. More than a restaurant, the QB Cafe is a real live cocktail bar, a go-to meeting place, a superlative museum exhibit, and most importantly, home to over 500 precious artifacts here at the museum, like this statue and the wooden plaques that you see adorning the wall behind me. More about the plaques and the artifacts later, but first I'd like to tell you a little bit about the history of QB and how it came to be here in Pensacola. The QB Cafe was part of the Naval Air Station QB Point Airdrome co-located uh, with the Subic Bay Naval Base in the Republic of the Philippines. Opened in 1956, the Air Base and the Associated Naval Base was a major hub for naval vessels working in the Western Pacific. And they were that way for almost 50 years. Um, certainly in the Vietnam War, it was a go-to spot for the aircraft carriers operating uh, in the Gulf of Tonkin and in Yankee Stadium. It was a great place to go, pull into for four or five days for rest and relaxation. Over, and that continued into the Cold War. Over the years, this QBO club became a, a, the place to go for air crew and other folks that were on Liberty and QB. And a tradition evolved where we would end up, squadrons would end up making plaques. They would take advantage of the exquisite craftsmanship here in the Philippines to make plaques commemorating their squadron's deployment and they would make two plots. Yeah, one to take back to home base, say NES Lemoore, North Island, Naval Air Station, Whidbey Island, and the other would be placed in the QBO club. You see here, HMM 163 had a plaque from their 1985 Westpac deployment, VAQ 135 from their world cruise in 1989 and 1990. Unfortunately, this came to a drastic halt in the spring of 1991, when Mount Pinatubo, a volcano in the Philippines located about 20 miles north of Subic Bay and NES QB, erupted and buried Subic and QB in many, many feet of, of ash. Uh, it wreaked devastation not only to QB and Subic, but Clark Air Force Base, which was a neighboring Air Force Base about 15 miles east of uh, Mount Pinatubo. Um, the Navy, which was in negotiations with the Republic of the Philippines to extend the lease, decided after the devastation of Mount Pinatubo that it just wasn't in their interest to try to rebuild the base and renew the lease. So they decided to pull out of the full Philippines lock, stock, and barrel. And all of these plaques and this wonderful memorabilia in the O Club would have been lost had it not been for the vision of the commanding officer of NES, or excuse me, NES QB, Captain Bruce Boxcar Wood. He had the presence of mind to send in a reclamation team to gather up all these plaques, mm -hmm. photograph everything, and then uh, have it shipped back to the United States. Him, along with uh, my predecessor, Captain Rasmussen, decided later to, to create, recreate the QBO Club here in the National Naval Aviation Museum. And they took great pains to make sure the authenticity was there. Bear in mind, these are not replica plaques. These plaques came from the QBO Club circa 1991. I can speak to the authenticity as my name, sort of my name, is on this harm missile here. I was uh, on my third deployment as the Air Wing Landing Signal Officer for Air Wing 9. You'll see Lieutenant Sterling, Searles Sterling. Technically, they have my first name twice, my last name not at all. But I'm very, very honored to be memorialized here in the QB Cafe. Mm -hmm. The real neat thing is it wasn't just squadrons 
that took part in this. Other entities that were keep your hearts beating from October 1988. That was uh, the Naval Hospital at Subic Bay made that plaque to commemorate their time here in the Philippines. Let's go on a little bit of a trip. Again, everything here is authentic. Certainly, the, uh, the shuffleboard table was here. Many a game of shuffleboard was played with, uh, with your favorite adult beverage on the line. Now, many people come to this museum and they ask, they say, hey, Sterls, I was in the Philippines, in Cuba, in 1967. Where's my plaque? I was in Cuba in 1970. Where's my plaque? Well, as you might imagine, with the amount of uh, ships coming in and out of Cuba, and the great thing about Subic is you could go pier side, whether it's a nuclear carrier or conventional, going pier side is a great, great uh, benefit when you're on Liberty. But we had so many plaques coming in that the base would routinely recycle the plaques from the Oak Club proper to the very large bachelor officer's quarter, which was right up the hill. Um, so the key to longevity of the plaques here in the QB was to be innovative and creative. If you've got a plaque on the wall, that plaque's probably going to get recycled out at some point. But if you can be creative, there was a greater chance that your plaque would stay. I give you this Mark 82 bomb coming through the roof, VA-147. VA-147 at the time was flying A-7s. The Argonauts is their, uh, is their call sign of note. They have transitioned to the Hornet and the Super Hornet and now are the newest Navy squadron flying uh, the Joint Strike Fighter. But in the time, they came up with the idea of putting the 500-pound bomb through the roof with the names of the squadron members adorned on them. And that's why it's still here today. There's some other neat features to the QB. As you may be aware, uh, as a director of the museum, I'm a government employee, and there are not a whole lot of perks that come with being a government employee. That said, I do share a private dining area with uh, Lieutenant General Dwayne Teeson, the head of our foundation. What is she looking at? Okay, out of the way from here. It is a woman with artifacts that came from the QB. This rug came from the commanding officer's uh, office at QB, and these genuine Philippine mahogany doors, heavy as they are, were part of the exhibit as well. This uh, panoramic is a picture of the air base in June of 1991 as QB was trying to dig out from the many feet of ash that had buried uh, the air station when Pinatubo erupted in As you can see, there are plaques upon plaques upon plaques here, and we're very proud of it, and folks come here each and every day to look and try to find their name on the plaques or their loved one, a father, uh, a brother, or a relative. And again, having been in the Oak Club in 1991, this has the look and the feel as it was, again, having had the opportunity to be here multiple times Early in my Navy career as a young junior officer, I'm just thrilled that we're able to recreate this treasure here in your National Naval Aviation Museum. And I look forward to taking some questions from those there in Facebook land about this wonderful exhibit. So yes, Earls, we do have a few questions here. Um, the first one comes from me actually and it is this is there anywhere else that your name is listed other than this plaque here it's not actually and if it is i haven't found it yet but uh my name is only listed on that harm missile uh though if it's somewhere else in this museum i need to start looking uh looking more <laughs> great great so we also have another question um, and it comes from Robbie, and he says, what is, what is the first plaque that was ever made and hung up at, 
at QB Point? I, I honestly don't know. But one of the things that I do know is we're in the process with our absolute phenomenal curation staff. We are inventorying each and every plaque here. One of the things we're very, very excited ab about uh, unveiling in the near future is a kiosk which is sortable such that you can enter a name and find out where this plaque is located in this thing. Again, this is uh, over 500 artifacts in this wonderful exhibit that uh, doubles as a restaurant. So that, so that kind of dovetails on a question, a question from Eric. Eric. Um, his, his question, question is, is, does the museum have, have any sort of inventory, and when might that actually uh, come to fruition if not? Well, we hope to have that inventory out and the kiosk up and running in the near future. As you might imagine, it's quite a, a challenge to catalog all of these plaques and make sure you capture the names and put it in a sortable format such that our patrons can have access to it. So another question comes from Perry. Do you know who was the first to introduce this idea to the museum? Well, again, as I mentioned, Captain uh, Bruce Wood, boxcar. Again, now he's dealing with a lot of stuff going on with Pinatubo erupting and burying his naval air station in ash. But again, great kudos to that warrior, A-6 bombardier navigator and a wonderful, wonderful American who had the presence of mind to go gather up all these plaques and send them back to Pensacola and collaborate with my predecessor, the very, very created, creative and talented Bob Rasmussen again, who is responsible along with Captain Wood for putting this together. And it took some years to do it. Pinatubo erupted in 1991. Uh, this exhibit opened, I believe, in 1996. But again, the bar is authentic, the helmets, all this stuff came from the bar, and I remember it vividly as a young lieutenant uh, patronizing that bar when I was there on USS Nimitz. So another question is, did the museum staff work to restore all these since they were likely covered in ash at a certain point, or were they clean before they came to Pensacola? A little bit of both. They spent a lot of time in boxes uh, once they came from the Philippines, but the reclamation team that Captain Wood put together did clean them up at the site and before they got shipped back to the United States. And then as we started envisioning how the uh, exhibit would go, the, the restoration staff put some finishing touches on. That said, the plaques you see here are pretty authentic, right down to the dings and nicks that you see in many of them, because, wait for it, it was an O'Clock. <laughs> are these replica plaques, or are they the real deal? Which you just the absolute on? real deal. There are no replicas here. We have done some things to protect the artifacts. You may have noticed the acrylic on top of the shuffleboard, otherwise we'd be playing shuffleboard right now. We've done some other things to preserve the artifacts, but again, as is our custom at the National Naval Aviation Museum, you can literally reach out and touch these artifacts. And folks, it, it, is, it is pretty humbling to watch a son or a daughter come in here and find uh, their, their father's or mother's uh, name on a plaque here. It's pretty, pretty special. So Kate asks, does, does the museum add or rotate what's on display in the QB? Actually, we don't. We do have additional plaques in storage that we didn't put up. We've talked about in the future maybe adding some, but what you see here is pretty much everything uh, that, that's here and has been here since Captain Rasmussen put this in place in, uh, in 96. We'll cycle out some artifacts here and there, and, we're, and again, with the cataloging going on, we're really excited to be able to have folks uh, more easily find those names. Can, Can you talk, talk about the legend of the infamous QB Point, Point cat? cat? Actually, I can. Uh, in the basement of the QB was uh, a catapult. Now, those of you who know we're naval aviators. We live off aircraft carriers. There's a catapult, and then you, you land uh, with arresting gear. Well, naval aviators, being the innovative folks they were, they put together this Rube Goldberg catapult uh, in, the, uh, in the basement of the QBO Club. And it might have had possibly uh, adult beverages involved where folks would get into the cockpit and go shoot. And if you were successful, you'd end up in a small pool of water at the end of the catapult shot. Pretty fascinating.
Uh, watch the movie Flight of the Intruder, and you'll get a more uh, vivid explanation for that. So Matt asks, how long, how did you choose the current location of the items that are in the QB Point Cafe? As mentioned, we had photographic evidence of how it was, and the memories of Captain Rasmussen, 30 years before he became the museum director, was a young junior officer rattling around here. Again, QB Wallet was uh, used heavily during the Vietnam era. It was going hard from 1956 until it was shut down later in 91, early 92 after Pinatubo. Cold War, again, I was here three times, and uh, so it was done to try to make it look exactly as it was to include the dimensions. Obviously, the QBO Club was a lot bigger, and it was a phenomenal place. As you may have seen from the aerial photograph or in the early B-roll, the, the Oak Club sat on top of this wonderful hill looking northwest towards uh, over the air station towards the absolute gorgeous blue water uh, of Subic Bay. So that, that was part of that to make sure we had that authenticity when we put it back in here. Now, as this museum expanded, you're actually standing into what was originally the entrance to our museum in the south wing. When we added the west wing, the Blue Angel Atrium, and certainly our, our entrance, the quarter deck, uh, this offered a perfect place to create a restaurant, which is a key component to any museum, such as you want to feed your patrons so they will stay longer. And what a place to come get something to eat or drink and commune with your friends. Again, as I mentioned, it's a go-to meeting place. You want to debrief a flight after one of your training missions over at VT-86 or VT-4, this is your spot. So, which is your favorite plaque other than the bomb through the roof? The bomb to the roof is, is phenomenal. You have this uh, VS-21 fighting red tails, again, cracked. They were in anti-submarine warfare stuff, so it's good. And again, the plaques that were creative are the ones, and there was a business model for that, because it guaranteed you would stay in the museum longer. Having stayed in that bachelor officer quarters, I walked down those aisles, uh, down the passageway, and there were cruise plaques from way, way, way back in the day in the BOQ. To be here, you had to be creative or just have the luck of the draw of having to been through there recently, which was the case for my squadron, VAQ-138, in 1991. We were literally the, one of the last carrier strike groups to come to there in February of 1991. So Bob asks, did any of the plaques shown here come out of Trader John's? No, not. Uh, Trader John's, uh, the Wentworth Museum down in downtown Pensacola, has done a great job of capturing that other iconic place in Pensacola. But everything you see here is from QB, from the QBO Club, circa the spring of 1991. Are the tables with the emblems on them the originals? They are. They absolutely are. are. Again, similar to the wall plaques, it's a club, it's a restaurant, you need tables. So it would memorialize the squadron, what ship they were on, uh, when they deployed, Westpac 85, 86, uh, and then the, the junior officers here. And as you look around, there's some pretty famous names that were young junior officers or older commanding officers of um, members of squadrons here that are memorialized in the, in the QB. Are the chairs original? Are, are not original. They have been added along the way. I think there was limited stuff that Captain uh, Wood could send back to the United States, and he focused on the tables and uh, the artifacts that you see here, the, the plaques and some of the statuettes, which are pretty creative, as you can see. Absolutely. So someone asked, does the espresso machine behind the bar actually work? It does. And you can get a wide, a wide, wide, wide array of, uh, of beers, wines. San Miguel's, which was the go-to beer in the Philippines in the day, still is. And uh, you can get that here, along with a, a great meal with a wonderful wait staff that is just itching to get back to work here as we uh, open the museum, hopefully in the near future. So we have a question from Joey, and he says, I see that there are some pilot helmets behind you. Can you tell us a little bit about those? 
been collected over the day and our, curator, our curation staff led by Dina Lynn has put this together to make sure those, and again, they were in the QB, so it just adds to that look and feel of an oak club that you would see. And again, oak clubs are not unique to QB. We've had them Lemoore, Whidbey Island, Oceana, um, but, but this one's special for obvious reasons. Speaking of other clubs, um, did the Mediterranean fleet have a similar club as this? Not really. The Philippines was unique, again, with QB being uh, opened in 1956 for almost five decades. Aircraft carriers came, and as I mentioned earlier, your ability to go pier side was huge. Otherwise, a large aircraft carrier pulls into a Liberty port. You've got to get aboard a little Liberty launch and go, and it's painful. Uh, so going pier side, QB just had the, the, the presence, and certainly the Vietnam era was uh, with all the folks in Yankee Stadium. A lot of the plaques you see here came from that Vietnam era. So we have time for one more question. question, and you have shared your favorites, but what do you think is one of the most unique plaques? Unique, certainly VFA 147. I kind of liked it because it's Jason. They're the Argonauts. That's their call sign. So Jason and the Argonauts, and the actual bomb says Jason was here. Obviously a play on um, Friday the 13th, the movie. But there are some other neat, unique plaques here. This San Miguel bottle behind you by uh, VA196 is certainly one, and others. That's a tough one to figure out which is unique. But here's a suggestion. Make your way here to the museum, and you can pick out your favorite unique plaque here at the QB Bar and Grill at your National Naval Aviation Museum. And we're just thrilled to be able to highlight it here in yet another episode of Facebook Live. Thank, Thank you. you so much, sir. Sterling. For next week, please join us for the Coronado with Commander Marty Martin. Thursday, May 14th, 11 a.m. CT. And actually, that's two days from now. So this Thursday, May 14th, 11 a.m. Central Time for the Coronado with Commander Marty Martin. Thank you so much, and everyone have a wonderful day.